So first of all, I love the mixed superhero metaphors. Wonder Woman, Star Wars, it's great. So I am Aria Finger, the CEO and chief old person at Do Something and TMI Strategy, and we're going to talk about engaging young people. So why should you even listen to me? Who are we? Um, Do Something is actually the largest organization for young people and social change. We have 5.5 million members. These are young people who have taken action in their communities. And these 5.5 million young people's people are in every area code of the United States. Sorry, Chicago, we're just ahead of you. Uh, and also 131 countries around the globe. And how do we activate these young people? We create campaigns on every cause you can imagine. Global poverty, global warming, discrimination, cancer, Islamophobia, anything. And these 275 campaigns that are live on their, our site are simple calls to action that motivate tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of young people to take action. And because of all these young people and all these campaigns, we have an enormous amount of data. And we didn't want to keep it to ourselves. So we created TMI. TMI is a division of Do Something, and it's a strategy group that uses our expertise to help other companies and brands and nonprofits activate young people for social change. And we get to work with some of the amazing companies and nonprofits in the room, like PwC, and the best part is 100% of TMI's profits go back to fuel Do Something's work. So let's do this. First, we're going to talk about everyone's favorite generation, the millennials. So according to Google, uh, millennials ruined the Olympics, they ruined America, they're having less sex, and they're also lazy. <laughs> some of that's true, but some of it's not. They are not, we are not lazy. 62% have volunteered in the past 12 months, and one in two volunteer at least once a month. So we must remember that millennials are diverse in every sense of the word. They're racially diverse, geographically. They actually have very different political views. So whenever we hear sweeping generalizations, we should take it with a grain of salt. So I'm about to give you some sweeping generalizations. You know, throw some salt over your shoulder. What we do see is that millennials are the most stressed out generation compared to other generations at their same age. And it's no wonder. They compare other people's highlight reels to their behind the scenes. We can't all be Steph Curry. And we also see that with cause, fairness matters across the board. No matter what cause we're talking about, they cite fairness as one of the most important issues to them. But it's lucky. They do not actually believe, like Beyonce, that you must be flawless as a brand or a company. They don't expect that. They expect you to say sorry. They expect transparency and honesty. And I have a great do-something story of a time we had to say sorry. Ask me about it later. So this guy. We often think of millennials and hipsters as the same. Overeducated, Harvard educated, entitled, Brooklynites with beards, white guys on bikes. Um, but that's actually fixie bikes, no less. Uh, that's actually not true either. The majority, not the majority, the plurality of millennials live in the suburbs. And since 2000, the share of young people living in cities has decreased since Gen X were the young people of our time. And let's take Harvard. We know that all young people don't go to Harvard, but all young people don't even go to college. We just heard about community college. Well, 25 to 34 year olds, only one in three has a college degree. 18 to 25 year olds, only 40% are in college, four year or community at any given time. So this guy is not the average millennial. Uh, and neither are you, and neither am I, and neither are your coworkers. We need to look at the data. So let's talk for a moment about my favorite generation, Gen Z, the teens. I love this graphic from Vox, because it's true about everyone in this room. Teens today use drugs less than you did, drink less than you did, have sex less than you did. Teens today are better than you were. <laughs> the kids are all right. But lest you think that this is a fight among generations, most of these five rules that I'm about to talk about apply to anyone. It's just the communications technologies and methods that might have to change for young people today, whether it's millennials or Gen Z. So let's talk about these five rules. The first is forget about cause. I often hear from companies, what is the one silver bullet cause that if we launch a campaign on that, everyone will get involved? Or NGOs saying, I can't possibly get young people to care about my cause because they don't. Well, you know what? Young people care about everything. It's cause is not the variable that's going to get young people to interact or not. Don't believe me? Think of some of these cause campaigns, cause companies from the last few years. There's no way that Blake Mykoski, the founder of Tom, said, I bet shoeless kids in South Africa is the cause for young people. No. It was a cause that was important to him. 
And he knew that young people would follow a purpose-driven company as long as it had excellent marketing and branding. Which brings me to the poop emoji. <laughs> shitty marketing is shitty marketing, and you can't just put purpose on top of it. Purpose has to come along with excellent branding, marketing, and communication strategies. Rule number two, in real life is better than digital. So IRL might not be better than digital, but we see hysterical articles like this all the time. Young people would rather have an internet connection than sunlight. And then we throw hashtags on everything and start texting our grandmas, and it's no good. We need to remember that offline is also important. When we look at Do Something's 275 campaigns, the most successful ones are the ones that have an offline component. And that's important because 93% of word of mouth marketing happens offline. And young people, 60% of them, choose to volunteer solely because their friends are doing it. So we need to create offline interactions and connections so they can talk about purpose and their social change activations for your company or nonprofit. Number three, meet them where they are. That's why Do Something texts with 3.5 million young people. Of course, I just said offline is important, but we use digital tools to activate young people offline. And I think it's pretty well accepted that the mobile phone, this is a pretty little liar's reference for those of you who don't know, uh, the mobile phone is at the center of where we need to be when it comes to young people. But we need to understand what they're doing on their phones. We've actually seen messaging apps surpass social media in popularity. So it's not just one to many. Young people care about privacy. It's one to one or one to a few which is why we've been experimenting with chatbots and Facebook Messenger. And when you're on Facebook Messenger, you need to remember it's not social media, it's messaging, so the rules are different. And when we say meet them where they are, we mean the communication channel, but we also mean the content. A few weeks ago, Do Something launched a campaign called Sincerely Us. It was a campaign where Do Something members were creating happy Ramadan cards, and we were sending them to every single mosque in America to show Muslims in this country that teens got your back. We actually didn't know where young people stood on this issue, and it's, it's a tricky one, especially in these times. So when we sent out our text message to young people, we had a gating question. Freddie, who sends out our text messages every Tuesday, said, do you think students should learn about different religions in schools? If people said no, we sent them one direction. If they said yes, we gave them more information on hate crimes against Muslims that are on the rise and asked them, will you join us in this campaign showing support for Muslims? The good news, it worked. At this very moment, we have 30,000 homemade, beautiful, happy Ramadan cards in the Do Something office. More are coming in every single day, and we're sending them out to every mosque in America by the time Ramadan ends. Number four. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Z. Appreciate it. Don't give people choice. And I know that might be harsh, but we always think, like, give people stuff to choose from, and we get books like this, 500 Ways to Change the World, which is essentially a book called Paralysis, because you don't know what to do. So we were running a recycling campaign last year, and we could have done 500 Ways to Recycle. There probably are. We thought, oh, people want different ways. No. Actually, my team went out on this, and they came up with a campaign called 50 Cans that I thought was enormously boring. We were asking young people to recycle aluminum cans in increments of 50, because aluminum recycling is down among young people, and it worked. We created the largest ever youth-led recycling drive, 1.6 million cans collected and recycled, and also, creativity loves constraints. Because these young people didn't have to think about anything else, they thought about Star Wars a little bit, they sent us incredible photos before they recycled those cans, so we had incredible user-generated content to spiral this campaign to reach even more young people. And lastly, data is king. We sent out a survey, who should be most responsible for addressing the problems facing our world today? We were surprised. Young people said citizens, and that doesn't let you off the hook. Brands and NGOs, and my company especially, we need to give young people ways to take action that are real and meaningful and concrete. It is still our job. But when we learn from this data, we can fight the hippos, we can slay the hippos, we can make sure that the hippos don't win when we have data on our side. And who, you might ask, are the hippos? They are the highest paid people in the office. And the only way to beat them is with data. So if you want more youth insights on young people and social change, we have a weekly newsletter. 
It's via email, don't worry. We won't spam you via text. You can simply text TMI to 38383, and we'll give you our insight on a weekly basis. Thank you so much.